Howdy YouTube. It is a sunny, sunny day in northern Thailand. Woo! <laughs> I brought my hat. I want to show off my fancy new haircut. And speaking of my fancy new haircut, you know what's anything different about my face? I lost my mustache, man. It was not intentional. The guy indicated my mustache when I went in there. I thought he just wanted to trim the thing. And he's going, about to go onto it with the clippers and I figured he's just trimming it. But next thing I knew, man, all gone. So I could have said something to stop him, but by then he'd already gotten rid of half of it. The point of this video is that I've been in Thailand for a month. It's actually been longer than a month for my whole Southeast Asian trip, but almost a week of that was in Malaysia. So I've actually been in Thailand for a month and I've been in Malaysia for almost a week for like five days or so. So right now, of course, I'm in Thailand. I've been back, uh, I don't know, like four days after my visa run in Malaysia. And it's just a matter of counting down time now before I go to Malaysia for three months. I guess a good thing to address is why am I leaving Thailand? That's kind of a double-edged sword. Um, I love it here, guys. I know it's only been a month, but I can see real potential for this being kind of a home base for me. You know, <laughs> I know it's the first place I've seen, but I've done copious amounts of research on other other destinations around here in Southeast Asia. I've talked to lots of people who have been to these other countries. Wei, she's from Singapore and uh, she lived in Indonesia for a while. She spent time in Malaysia, all over Malaysia. That's, you know, just real close to Singapore. And my buddy Brett, he's been to these other countries on visa runs and he says, man, when you go to these other countries, you're really going to appreciate what Thailand has to offer. Mainly, the main point Brett was speaking to was the infrastructure. It's just uh, miles and miles beyond these other countries and you still get the very, very affordable prices on everything, which is really cool because that's why a lot of people come here. It's a big reason why I'm here is I can afford to live at a much higher standard of living here than I could in a lot of other destinations around the world, but certainly in my home country of the United States. So that's kind of my, uh, one of my main factors. And what you can get for your money here is just, it's just so far beyond these other countries. From what I understand, like I say, I haven't seen it myself, but I think I've collected enough data from research and from talking to people where I'm pretty confident that that's actually the case. At least right now, it could change, you know. So, with all that said, why the heck am I leaving? I've been going out with this beautiful woman here. I've got this awesome condo for, gosh, the equivalent of $300 US per month with this magnificent mountain sunset view. There's cool dogs everywhere. Look at this boy. <laughs> What a cutie. So why move on? It seems kind of like I have it made. And it kind of feels that way too. And that's actually it. That's the reason. <laughs> the reason I'm on this trip is for adventure and to see the world. And I can totally see myself just being one of these guys who's like, I came to Thailand and I've never left. It's been years and years. It's doable. I mean, the bottom line with all the visa stuff, and I know I complain about this a lot, the bottom line is they're charging what the market will bear. It's the free market at work. They're charging as much and making it as much of a hassle as they can while still getting that flow of people coming through. What they want is a churn. They want a churn of fresh people coming in to spend money and they want them to spend their money and move along and get fresh people in to spend their money. And in economic sense, you're gonna make a lot more money that way than just having people stay for many reasons. People kind of learn their way around and learn how to get the good deals. If you, even in the case of uh, just the hotel and 
apartment industry here, housing industry, they're going to get a lot more money from people staying shorter term. So in a lot of different ways you look at it, it's just more profitable to have that constant churn and that's what they want. And they're able to get it because of what they offer, because of what I just described with getting so much more for your money with a just way higher level of infrastructure here, so much more comfortable. Even though that's the case, someone like me, I'm kind of a, a black sheep in this sense because a lot of the reason they want that churn is because they don't want people from other countries to come here and take Thai jobs. They're very, very transparent about that. And anything you do as far as visa or passport related things, they're always making sure that it's very clear that you are not to work here unless you have a work permit. And there's stiff penalties for that. You can get banned from the kingdom is my understanding if you uh, break too many rules like that. So their main concern is just that outsiders, foreigners don't take jobs away from Thai people. So someone like myself, I have enough passive income to where I do not have to work here. I make these videos and I hope that they'll be profitable and afford me to reach some more expensive destinations. Like I really want to visit Singapore. I really, really want to go to Japan. And there's parts of Europe, saw a decap, that I would really like to see. And in all honesty, I just can't afford a lot of that on my current budget. I've pretty much got to stick to the cheaper countries, which is fine with me. I can go all the way around the world, take a few years, do it this way. And I will if things just keep going the way they are. I really need to ramp that income up. So please share these videos if you like them. Please note I do have a Patreon if you find this content especially beneficial for you. So those are ways you can help me get to some of these more expensive destinations. If not, no worries, I still got it covered. So all that said, I'm not really, I'm really more like the retiree that they would let just stay. Once I'm 50, I can, uh, get a retirement visa and then I've just got to uh, go in every three months declare that my address is the same and all that but there's no more having to renew the visa or any of that stuff I've just basically got to check in every few months and for all intents and purposes that's already me I've got the income I already meet their income threshold that they need but I'm just not old enough yet so what I'm getting around to in a very roundabout way is that that's the time when it's really ideal for me to be here is like in seven years. When I'm 50, I can uh, just come back and get a retirement visa if I decide I want this to be a home base. What I could really see doing in the long term would be to rent a very affordable house. A lot of times you can find a house for like maybe not half but close to half the cost of uh of the condo i'm renting here like i'm paying 10,000 baht and for 6,000 baht there's all kinds of houses you can rent out more in more of a rural setting which would be appealing to me i mean i'm kind of in the suburbs here this is what suburbs are like in thailand at least in this area so i'm kind of out of the main city already but as you can see there's still quite a bit of hustle and bustle and I'd like to get even farther out in more of the countryside and just have a scooter to get around and go in and out of the city when I want to. And out in that area, I could get a lot for my money with rent. I could get a pretty nice place for like 6,000 baht. And that's cheap, man. That's only like 180 US a month. Of course, I'd be responsible for utilities, I'm sure. But I could probably get everything done for around about 200, maybe a little over 200 US a month. And uh, the cool thing with that is I wouldn't lose sleep if I rent a place like that year round, maybe even secure a better deal because I'm renting it long term, rent it year round. And then if I need to leave for a while, I can just leave, go travel somewhere else and come back and just keep my place here as a home base. That's what I'm thinking about doing down the road. And who knows, I may find a destination that I like even better. I may really love Mexico and be like, you know what? this is the place to do that. But I'm kind of seeing that I think that's kind of a, a good option for me in the future to do something like that. 
the bottom line is right now I just I'm setting out on this mission to go around the world I can't just <laughs> settle in the first place I go even though so many people do that just because Thailand's so awesome it's like I went to the coolest place first I think is kind of the impression I'm getting about Southeast Asia Grand, there's a lot of beautiful places and mysterious places and exotic places in Southeast Asia I want to visit but as far as somewhere to live which is kind of what I'm doing because of my uh, budget constraints that I was just describing I really need to just go places and stay there for a while and that's how I'm gonna be able to stretch my money so but staying somewhere for months and months I don't think you can beat Thailand and I hit it right out the gate you know my intention with Thailand was for it to be the training wheels and I think the way I'm looking at this is like Thailand was like the little bike with the training wheels now I'm ready for my big boy bike it's still not quite a full-size bike but I can get rid of the training wheels get something a little bit bigger and that's Malaysia it's a little bit more of a step toward India they got the Muslim population they've got a kind of a different demographic than does uh, Thailand I think there's a lot more Indian people in Malaysia at least from what I've seen it's a lot of Indian restaurants and stuff so to me it seems like a little bit more of a step in that direction the infrastructure honestly is not going to be a step in that direction from what I can tell the infrastructure in Langkawi is very much similar to Chiang Mai it's really a city that's on the move and we'll talk about that more later but they've got some big projects going they're converting their airport to an international airport they're building like amusement parks and all kinds of crazy stuff it's really like seems like it's about to boom so I really I enjoy seeing it in the state it's in now while I can because I think it's gonna become a much bigger tourist attraction in years to come maybe even months to come so that's kind of the plan guys and that's kind of why I'm moving along even though it's great here even though I'm making friends I've got all kinds of things that would just make me want to hang my hat and be like all right I found my place this is it it's the first place man I can't just stop in the first place and then you add to that all the visa issues it's like man there's so many places I can go where they're like they've got open arms it's not like hey 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 wait a minute trying to push me away the way Thailand feels it's like come on in baby you know what I mean so with Malaysia having an attitude more like that and certainly India um, with my 10-year visa I got there's just so much I want to see and then who knows it could be back to Thailand even before that seven years is up because like I said if I just rent a house that's very affordable year-round I can acquire some things I don't have to be living out of one bag I can acquire some things have a very comfortable household and then just leave for a visa run not worry because I'm only paying about 200 US per month for that place by then hopefully I build up other income and then it's even less of an issue so that's the plan that's why I'm leaving Thailand please let me know what you think of the mustache should I keep it should I lose it I don't know I kind of miss it <laughs> I honestly kind of miss it let me know what you think guys and I'll see you next time YouTube